So how many of you are excited about this news? I just heard about this and I decided I wanted to put together a video for my anticipation of these fragrances. So Versace has launched six new fragrances, six total fragrances, as part of their more higher end private blend kind of collection of fragrances and all designers are doing it and Versace's is now called Atelier Versace and there's six fragrances and uh, I'm going to tell you about these six fragrances and let's see if you guys are excited as I am. I'm excited about these fragrances but I'm very very cautious because I don't find a lot of Versace fragrances ones that I really like or gravitate towards. In fact, the, la the, the only fragrance, I, my, I own several fragrances from this house, but my favorite still is a fragrance that was launched in the 90s, and that is um, Dreamer. Anyway, we're going to talk about these six fragrances, so if you want to find out about them, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. If this is your first time tuning into the channel and you love watching fragrance review videos, finding out about new fragrances like the fragrances we're going to talk about today, d discovering new brands, participating in giveaways, and still haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the be bell icon so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Anyway, uh, as mentioned, Versace is not a brand that I really gravitate towards when it comes to fragrances. Um, it's owned, their parent company is called Eurotali. And Eurotalia has multiple brands under its uh, umbrella, and it includes Moschino, which recently I did a review for Toy Boy. You should check that out if you're um, uh, interested in that fragrance. Uh, I have a full review of it. There's also Missoni, D, D Squared, and then a couple of other brands. But there's not a lot of really big brands under this Eurotalia group, where uh, is the, the distributor that distributes the Versace fragrances. So. As I see it happening with all brands, I'm, I'm anticipating uh, Valentino soon to follow as well because I think Valentino is under L'Oreal now. I think they've sw switched over from Pouge to L'Oreal. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I read that somewhere. But I'm all brands are doing this now. They're launching their more exclusive or private or privé or whatever collection. Uh, we saw from Gucci and uh, I have a lot of the Gucci fragrances from their Alchemist's Garden collection and all of those were created by Alberto Moria and I've done a few videos about them here and there but now we've got Versace doing it and Versace has hired um, I think it's four or five different perfumers um, that are creating these fragrances and the collection is called Atelier Versace for some odd reason the Atelier Versace name and the images that I saw is kind of reminding me of um, Givenchy's Atelier uh, line of uh, fragrances, which is their upper end uh, line of fragrances. Um, so that's kind of a negative for me because it seems like it's copying it, but then again, uh, I, I don't think it's copying it. The other negative that's already with this, this is the collection of fragrances, that's the price point, $330 for a 100 ml bottle. All of these retail for $330. Eau de Parfum Concentration, Eau de Parfum Concentration, and that's a negative that's really, really highly priced. Now, I think Gucci launched at $330, and now the fragrances are at $340. I could be wrong, but I bought some of mine in Europe, um, and they were a little less expensive than here. But uh, $340, $330, really, really high. I mean... Louis Vuitton launched their fragrances. They're more in the upper scale line of fragrances, and those were launched at 240, and I think they're up to 260 now per bottle. And those Louis Vuitton fragrances are all refillable, whereas the Gucci's were not refillable or are not refillable. I'm not sure about the Versace's if they're going to be. I doubt they're going to be refillable because Louis Vuitton has so many stores all over the world and you can stop in and refill them. With uh, Gucci, I can understand why uh, they're not refillable because I, well, I guess maybe there's the, about the same amount of stores with Gucci, maybe, I, I don't know. But Gucci's on an upward uh, trend and uh, with Versace, um, I don't think so. But they, they will definitely not be refillable and I feel like this $330 price tag for these fragrances is just over overpriced, absolutely overpriced. Um, really overpriced. I mean, even the Dior Privé collection fragrances are cheaper. Like you can pay 330 and get the 250 ml, whereas 100 ml from Versace is 330. So, do the math here. Anyway, so let's go over some of the fragrances because there's some that sounds really nice. So, 
The first one we're going to talk about is Eclat de Rose. Again, 330 for the 100ml bottle. And this one is created by Nathalie Lorson, one of my favorite perfumers. And if you've been following my channel, you should have seen a video I did, Top 5 uh, Nathalie Lorson Fragrances video. If you like her, definitely uh, check out that video because she's done some excellent releases. or uh, Actually, she's done some excellent perfumes for different brands. And uh, I, I list my top five there so you can check that out. But with this one, it's a rose fragrance, obviously. Every designer in the high, higher end collection has a rose. It's like the most popular. Gucci had a song for the rose, or has a song for the rose. And of course, with Versace, it has Eclat de Rose. And this one contains notes of Moroccan rose, centifolia, ambrox, amber, frankincense, woods, tobacco, and musk. Sounds really nice. It sounds like not your typical, like, um, more feminine-leaning rose. This one seems like it's going to be a little more uh, intense and smoky and more uh, robust, maybe, leaning oriental. And this one actually sounds exciting to me, especially the fact that it has frankincense and tobacco and that that musk in there as well. And then the ambrox. Ambroxan is really popular. So this one actually sounds great. It is created by Nathalie Lorson, and I'm a big fan of her, so I'm very, very curious about this one. But once again, I'm very, very cautious. The price tag is so high that uh, I'm a little nervous about these fragrances. Anyway, number two is Cedrat de Diamant. Again, $330. This one is created by Marie Salamagna from Firminich. Now, if you've been following my channel for several years, you would know about Marie Salamagna because I speak about her a lot. She's done all of the um, fragrances for Atelier des Ors. Every single one of the fragrances from that house are done by Marie Salamagna. Also, she's done fragrances for um, I've got a list here. She's got uh, Joe Malone. Uh, she did Maison Margiela's By the Fireplace, which is a really, really popular fragrance. And I'm sure you know that one. I've spoken about it. And that's probably one of her big sellers. And she's done a lot of fragrances for uh, Joe Malone as well. And, of course, several others for Maison Margiela and many other brands. So she's been around quite a bit. And this one, Cedrat de Diamant, the notes are Italian lemon zest pink grapefruit, woods, cedarwood, and vetiver. So this one sounds like a, a masculine woody fragrance, maybe perhaps with some aromatic, more citrus rather than aromatic touches. Uh, and uh, it sounds interesting. It doesn't excite me as much because uh, it's a typical style of fragrance that I've smelled over and over and over again. But let's see what Marie Salamagna does to it in, under the, the um, Versace direction. We'll see um, if it goes in a positive direction or if it just falls flat because, it, you know, I've smelled this kind of fragrance over and over again. Anyway, that one is Cedrat de Diamant. Now, number three is another one by Nathalie Lorson. She's done two fragrances, no, two fragrances for this uh, collection, uh, the Atelier Versace collection. This one is Jasmine Assolet. $330 again, EDP concentration. This is... Uh, uh, Notes of uh, Indian jasmine, beeswax, hay, tobacco, lemon, cedar wood. For some odd reason, bees, beeswax I'm seeing come up a lot. And for some reason, beeswax for me is hit or miss. I like some, I don't like others. Like um, I smelled recently a musk fragrance that had the major dose of beeswax and I, I didn't like that fragrance whatsoever. Absolutely hated it actually. And a lot of people like it, but some for some reason I think it was a beeswax in there I didn't like. So this one, I'm also very cautious about, uh, but then again, it's Lantelli Lorson, and I like what she does. Uh, again, the price tag is very high. All of these fragrances, the price tag is way too high, way too high. The bottles are gorgeous, though. Can you see how beautiful the bottles look? The caps look like the caps for the bottles from Eros, Eros Flame, those bottles um, have that same cap. So I like the presentation, just the price tag is really high. But, and again, we'll see how Jasmine Assole smells like when we smell it. Uh, I don't know who's gonna carry these fragrances, that's the other question. So is it gonna be a blind buy situation? Is uh, Neiman Marcus or is uh, Saks or Bloomingdale's gonna bring these in house because I don't see a lot of Versace fragrances in any of the retailers except for Macy's. Maybe they're going to go right to Macy's. I don't know, but uh, we shall see. But then uh, I like this perfumer, as I said, and hopefully it'll be a nice one. But it is Jasmine, and Jasmine tends to go feminine, obviously. So there are three more fragrances. We've done three of the fragrances. Uh, this next one is called Fig Blanche. 
Again, 330, Eau de Parfum concentration, and this is created by a perfumer by the name of Mary Pierre Julien from Givaudan. And the only fragrance that I know of hers, I looked up her fragrances, and the only uh, one that's listed uh, was a fragrance called Boyfriend by Kate Walsh. Uh, was sold at uh, Sephora for quite a while. I think it's discontinued now. But I don't know this perfumer, and uh, I don't know what she's done, but this one is sort of exciting to me because I love the, the smell of fig in fragrances and this one has notes of fig, Italian mandarin, bergamot, neroli, jasmine, and rose. So we'll see what happens with this one but this one actually and the first one are the two most exciting ones so far for me and uh, we shall see. Fig can go either really good or really like boring so I'm hoping this one doesn't go boring but from the notes it doesn't seem like it's going to be like like the wow factor kind of a fragrance, we shall see. I don't know what Versace is going to do with their fragrances, but as I was mentioning, I'm not a big fan of their fragrances. But these ones seem a little exciting. The disappointing factor, of course, as I said, is the price tag. So that's Fig Blanche, created by Mary Pierre Julien from Givaudan. Next one is called Vanille Rouge. And of course, I love me my vanilla fragrances. And this is created by uh, Jordi Fernandez. Once again, the, uh, the price tag for these is 330 EDP concentration. And Jordi Fernandez I'm not too familiar with as well, but she's done fragrances for Ex Nihilo, a lot of them. Um, there's a fragrances for a brand by the name of Genium, Genium from Spain, who I believe was at Essence last year uh, or earlier this year. And then she's done fragrance for Utopia and some other uh, brands, but also uh, she was mentioned under Mont Blanc Explorer. So I think Explorer had multiple perfumers listed and she was one of the I think it's a she, was one of the, the perfumers that worked on a Mont Blanc Explorer. So this one sounds pretty exciting to me. This is Madagascan Vanilla, Roasted Almond, Musk and Rose. But then again, I've got so much vanilla fragrances. Do I need another one? Bottles look great. Um, and it could either go in a very unique direction where it's something I don't have, or it can go into the direction where the, they make the vanilla smell like every other vanilla. So um, there's the spicy vanillas, there's the boozy vanillas, there's the more um, creamy whipped cream kind of vanillas, and uh, maybe some that go in a cakey direction. This one seems like it's going into an almond direction uh, with some musk and rose. So the rose and vanilla might work together and that's why this one excites me and that's why it's called Vanille Rouge, I'm assuming, because it has that rose note. So anyway, this is another one that I want to try from a perfumer I'm not too familiar with, and um, that's that one. And the last fragrance from this collection is called Santal Boise from a perfumer by the name of Christophe Reynaud from Fermanich. And uh, he's very, very familiar. He's very, very famous perfumer. Well, uh, I don't know if the word famous is to be used. It's very, he's a perfumer that's done a lot of stuff. His catalog is huge. It's a long list of perfumes. Uh, again, Santal Boise 330 EDP, 100 ml bottle. But the one that stands out for me from this perfumer is the two Oriental collection fragrances from um, Issey Miyake and the really popular one called Noir Ombre. He's done that. But he's also done fragrances for Mugler, Carnot Barcelona, etc. Uh, Jill Sander, you name it, a lot of different brands um, and um, this one sounds pretty nice to me. I love sandalwood but this one has notes of Sri Lankan sandalwood, cypriol and saffron. So this one sounds really really exciting to me. I love cypriol. Um, it comes up a lot in uh, fragrances. It's kind of um, a very earthy, uh, slightly patchouli, like slightly papyrus woody, earthy kind of a note that I really, really like. Um, sandalwood can go medicinal, so cypriol also can go medicinal, so I'm just hoping this is not like your uh, pillbox in a, in a bottle, because I've smelled sandalwood fragrances before. I don't want to name who the brands are, but I've smelled sandalwood fragrances and it. All it smells like is um, spills like a medicine you open up vitamins or something and that's what it smells like now sometimes uh, medicinal fragrances can be great like when it has ambrette uh, musky i like that but sometimes uh, sandalwood and cypriol like uh, not necessarily uh, cypriol as well but um some as i said some sandalwood fragrances has gone very very medicinal hopefully this is not going medicinal and then there's that saffron note for an aromatic herbal quality with some uh, maybe perhaps some leathery touches as well as saffron can go uh, leathery. So this one actually sounds really great to me. Um, and 
we'll see what happens. I'm very, very curious about these, and uh, I'm not like I'm not like really excited because the price tag isn't overwhelmingly uh, too expensive. Uh, but uh, if they're really, really good, they're probably going to be worth it. And but if then if they're um, a disappointment. Um, uh, people will notice that the price tag is too high and they're not going to go after it because again when you do the math a $330 bottle for a 250 ml Dior Privé or Maison Christian Dior collection fragrance versus a 100 ml bottle of $330 same price tag you get more per mil so less per mil price for the Dior the Maison Christian Dior fragrances versus the Versace fragrances so you have to do the math and see if if it's worth it for you. But I'm still excited. I'm very cautious about these. Let me know what you think of these fragrances, guys. Do you, first of all, do you know the perfumers that worked on these fragrances? Second of all, do you like Versace as a brand? And what do you think of this price tag for these fragrances? Is it high or is it uh, something you can afford? Let me know. Put some comments down and let me know which of these fragrances sounds the best to you because I'd like to find out what kind of fragrances you like. Do you have the same taste as me? Like, do you like the sandalwood, the vanille rouge, and do you like the fig, and uh, of course the uh, rose? If you like those as well, or maybe you like the, the jasmine and the cedrat. Let me know. And also, did I mention, did, have you, do you know these perfumers? If you do, let me know that as well. Other than that, guys, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please do list below. If you haven't subscribed yet, there's a subscribe button here. Please subscribe. And also, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.